Welcome back. So in the past couple of videos, we've been talking about controlling, how to control for variables, when to control for variables, which variables to control for. And we're doing this so that we can close backdoor paths on our causal diagrams. Now, we're going to continue talking about that, but we're going to be talking about a different class and a different approach of ways to try to close those back doors, other than controlling in quite the same way that we did. All these uh, approaches are going to focus on the concept of the untreated group, the treated and the untreated group. Basically, these all are going to be approaches that are going to apply when we have some sort of treatment, when our, when our X, when our treatment variable is binary. And usually this is something like you received some certain policy or not. You can think of it like an experiment. Are we going to send you to the doctor's office or not? Right? That's binary. It's either zero or it's one. Now, when we have this, it makes it a lot more simple conceptually to try to think about, well, what is it that we're trying to do? We're trying to close all these backdoor paths. We're trying to compare people who have the same levels of these variables that are on our backdoor paths so that we can close the backdoor paths and identify the effect that we're interested in. So what we've been doing with controlling or adjusting is statistically looking at the value of the variables that we have and subtracting out what we can explain. We're going to be looking at a different way of doing that with looking at a control and a treatment group. So we're going to be looking at basically people we know received the treatment and people who didn't. And we're going to try to basically make the best comparison that we possibly can among the observations that we have. And what this is going to do is it's going to intuitively give us a way of thinking about, I know that the only thing that's different about the group people who, who received the treatment and the people who didn't is that one of them received the treatment and the other didn't. I'm basically trying to isolate some sort of random variation that for the exact same person, it gives us both a treated observation and a non-treated observation. In particular, the way the one that I'm going to talk about today is called matching. Now, matching is not quite as commonly done in economics as it is outside of economics, but we're going to focus on it today because I think it's a good way of conceptually getting into these treatment effects models. And we're going to talk about some other things that economists are more likely to do in the next couple of videos when comparing treatment and control groups. So what is matching? Matching is basically the idea that instead of statistically adjusting for the values of variables that are different, and then we want to close on our backdoor paths. Instead, we're just going to select groups of people that are already the same. This is sort of like using the selection of our sample as a means of controlling for variables. If you remember in the last video, I talked about how one way of controlling for variables is to simply select a sample on which people have the exact same value of those variables. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do it, except this time, intentionally. What matching is, is you take the group of people who are in the treatment group, and you look at all the variables that you think are going to be on backdoor paths that you're going to want to close. Then you're going to look at our control group and you're going to find people who are very, very similar on those variables that we want to close to the people who are in the control group. And then we're going to ignore everybody else. And what we're going to end up with is, by construction, two samples, a treated group and an untreated group. And because we specifically selected them this way, they're going to have very similar values of all those variables on the, on the, back, on the backdoor paths which means that we've, co we've closed those backdoor paths and therefore we can identify the effect we're interested in. Now, just like before, just like with controlling or adjusting for variables regularly, this requires that we can actually close all those backdoor paths that we have listed and matched upon all the variables that we need to identify our effect of interest. So let's see how this works just sort of conceptually. So imagine we have some data, some of it is treated and some of it is untreated. What we're going to do is we're going to try to look for observations of the control group, the untreated group, that are very similar on that x-axis. We're going to ignore everybody else. We're going to toss them out. Then we're going to take the average within the treated group, the average within the untreated group, and basically say, yeah, we've closed all the backdoor paths, and the difference that's still there between them, that's going to be our causal effect. So let's do this, actually, on our own. Now, there are lots and lots and lots of actual ways to match. There are many, many different ways to pick a control group that is similar, by some measure, on all the variables that we're interested in matching on. The particular one that we are going to do is called coarsened exact matching. And the reason I've picked this particular version is because it is a little bit easier to actually code up ourselves without having to use some sort of uh, black box package that somebody else wrote for us. Also, it works pretty good. So the idea with coarsened exact matching is that Unlike in the animation that I just showed you, where I've sort of had a window on either side of each of the treated observations, we're going to require an exact match. Where if you're a treated person, and let's say you're five foot nine, and you have, uh, 
uh, green hair and you're a, a man and you have uh, two left feet, we're specifically going to look for somebody in the control group that has all of those things exactly. And if they're not, if there's no match there, toss them out. If, we, if you're a treated person and we can't find anybody who matches you, you're out too. We have to find somebody who matches on you exactly. If you're from the computer science world or the data science world, you might recognize this as finding doppelgangers. Uh, it's a cool term that they use. The other thing you might notice is that, well, what if one of the variables that we want to match on is continuous? So let's say one of the we need to match on income. Now, no two people are going to have exactly the same income, right? Somebody might have twelve thousand two hundred and one dollars. Uh, another person might have twelve thousand two hundred and two dollars. Well then we would fail to find a match. But that's not really gonna work out for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna coarsen the data first. So whenever we have a continuous variable, we're gonna chop it up into bins and basically say, we're gonna match you on somebody else if you're in the same bin as somebody else. So let's actually do this. Let's take an example. So what I have here is some data. I'm gonna load up the tidyverse. I'm gonna load up the, uh, e the economic data package and I'm gonna load in some wages data. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the effect of being in a union on your wages, right? We would expect from economic theory that people in unions should end up getting paid higher wages because they have the ability to bargain for higher wages. It gives them some pricing power. Pricing power means you're gonna get paid more. We can imagine what the diagram for this might look like. There are a lot of things that might affect whether you're in a union and also affect your wages. For example, men are more likely to be unionized, at least depending on what decade you look at, and also men are likely to earn higher wages. Uh, the amount of experience that you have, the region that you live in, uh, whether or not you're in a blue collar type job, lots and lots and lots of different things that might affect. If we wanna make a fair comparison, an apples to apples comparison where we've closed all these back doors, well, we can match. We can take all the unionized people and we can find people who are not in unions who are exactly like them in every way. So let's do that. So the way we're going to do this is first thing we're going to do is we're going to course them. We're going to, we're going to have this long list of variables we want to match on. We want to match on your education, your experience, uh, whether you're a blue collar worker, uh, whether you're what industry you're in, whether you're in the South by region, uh, whether you're in a metropolitan area, whether you're married, whether you're man or woman, and whether you are black or white. In this, in this particular data, it's only black or white, no other races. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to course in the data. Uh, so as I mentioned, if we have a continuous variable, you know, there's no way that somebody else is going to have the exact same value as you. So we're going to, we're going to cut it up. We're going to do this with the cut command. So what I have here, I have a mutate command, right? So I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to create coarsened versions of both education and experience. I'm going to use the cut command to do this. And the cut command will basically split up the variable into different bins. And the number of uh, breaks it's going to use, I'm going to set right here. So I'm going to create three different breaks, and that's going to separate out the education variable and also the experience variable into different bins that I can match on in a more coarsened manner. That's the name. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up the data into our treatment and control version. So I'm going to use the filter command here. It's going to select just some of the observations. So I'm going to uh, create a union data set that only has the union data in it. I'm going to create a non-union data set that only has the non-union data in it. Then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the average of our outcome variable within each group, right? Because I want to match you to somebody else based on your exact match. And I want to compare the wage of the people with that exact match to the wage of the people who are either treated or uh, not treated. So either in the union or not. So I want to get the average wage within each exact little group of doppelgangers. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use group by on all the variables that I want to match on. So it's going to create basically a bunch of intersecting cells. So it's not just going to be the average within education, the average within experience, the average within race, etc. It's going to be with this education level and this experience level and this whether or not you're blue collar and this industry and this region and this metropolitan area and this whether you're married and gender and race. All of them at once. And so within that exact bin of all those intersecting variables, I'm going to get the average of your wage using summarize. So I get the average, the mean of the log wage within that group. Then I'm going to go back to my, and then I'm going to do that in the non-union data. So I've created the average within the non-union data. And then I'm going to go back to the union data. I'm going to use inner join. Now join is a command that's very useful when you're working with data. It basically takes two data sets for all the variables that they share. It matches them up which is exactly what we want to do, right? We want to match you with your exact doppelganger. So it's going to notice that in the union and non-union data, it's got an education variable, an experience variable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
And so it's going to match them up. It's going to say, ah, I noticed that in the non-union data, I have somebody, I found somebody with your exact match of qualities, and I'm going to assign that to you. So I'm going to create that inner join, that union, and then I'm going to get the mean of the log wage uh, within the group of union people who were matched. The fact that I'm using inner join specifically is a, there's a number of different versions of the join function. Inner join only keeps successful matches. That's why we're using that one. You're not matched. We don't care about you. Uh, so I'm going to get the average log wage, which is currently the union log wage, right? Because we're working with the union data of all of the matched union people. And I'm going to get the non-union mean, and that's going to be the average of the untreated wages, okay? So let's actually run this. So first we're going to course in our data. Then we're going to get the union data and the non-union data. And then I'm going to do this join and take the average of the wages within the union group that's matched and the non-union group that's matched to them and see what the wages are. And what we see here is that the mean within the union is 6.69. Uh, the mean outside the union is 6.57. These are This is a log wages. So the difference there is about uh, 0.1, which means that there's a 10% wage bump to being in the union compared to the person who has the exact same qualities of all those variables that we listed, but is not in the union. So a 10% wage bump, nothing shabby. So that's basically it. The concept that we're going for is we're trying to pick a treatment group and a control group, got the policy, didn't get the policy, that are completely comparable, except that one got the, the, uh, the treatment and the other one did not. One way to do this is by matching, finding two groups of people who are pretty much exactly the same on every variable that we want, that we think is on a back door. So we can close all those back doors by matching. There are other ways to do it as well. Uh, by selecting the control group very carefully, we'll cover those in future videos. Uh, that's the basic idea of untreated groups and matching, and that's it. I will see you next time.